Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Yuzu Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a viscose jersey. It has stretch in both directions and good for a little top like this. And on to the cutting out. There are two flounces on this top. This is the first of them. It's a little bit larger than the second and I'm cutting four pieces here. I've got one notch just to indicate the neckline and then on to the smaller flounce. Same thing again here, I'm cutting four of these and now on to construction. So I'm just laying one flounce over the other at the shoulder and pinning and ready to stitch. And I'm stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And of course I do that on all flounce pieces. So I've just finished my edges there on the overlocker. And while I was there, I finished the hem of each of my flounces. Pressed it up by my one centimeter seam allowance and ready to stitch. So I'm stitching here directly through those overlock stitches, back stitching at the start, trying to stick right along the edge there the whole way around and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And off camera, I've just given it a little bit of a press. So now I need to join my flounces together. So I'm just laying the larger flounce over the smaller, wrong side of the larger flounce to right side of the smaller flounce and pinning in between those notches you see me snip earlier. And stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance. Back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. So now I just need to snip into those notches a little bit further. So just snipping right up to that first stitch and right up to the last stitch. This is just going to help me out when I come to the next step. I also need to tidy up the seam between those notches. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to add some clear elastic. So on the overlocker this time, I'm just lining up that clear elastic with my seam and cleaning up my edge here, attaching the clear elastic at the same time. And hopefully what the clear elastic will do here is not allow that fabric across the shoulder to stretch out too much while I'm wearing it. So that's how that looks. So now to finish off those flounces at the shoulder, I just need to understitch. So I'm just pressing that seam allowance towards the larger flounce and I'm going to run a stitch line right along that seam edge. So you can see that a little bit better here. So my seam allowance is pressed over towards the larger flounce. I'm stitching just about a millimeter or two away from that seam. I'm stitching on the larger flounce and right through that seam allowance underneath. And that's how that looks. Nice and neat and tidy. And all this understitching is doing is helping that larger flounce to stay nicely tucked in underneath. So just a bit of a press here just to finish it off. And that's the shoulder part of my flounce complete. So now I need to prep that lower part of the flounce. So this part will be sewn into the bodice. So just to hold those two flounces together and make it easier for me to sew them into the bodice, I just want to tack them together. So stitching here within my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end, and as I say, just to hold these two pieces together. So that's how that looks. So that's my flounces all prepped and ready to be added to the bodice. So for the body of this top, I have a front piece cut on the fold. I have a little notch at the center at the neck and a back piece again cut on the fold and that same little notch at the center at the neck and then two underarm pieces. And for these ones, I have two layers of fabric underneath those pattern pieces. So starting with the front, I have my bodice right side up 
and I'm laying one side of my flounce right sides together with my bodice and pinning and ready to stitch. And here I'm just tacking those flounce pieces to the bodice for now. I'll sew them permanently when I add those little underarm pieces. So back stitching at the start, sewing within my seam allowance the whole way along and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And of course I've went ahead and done the same thing on the other side. So you can see that here. And now to add those underarm pieces. So I'm just pinning one end to the side of the bodice and to the bottom of the flounce. So anchoring my first stitch right at that pin, back stitching, and straight away I'm going to pivot. So just turning that fabric, making sure that each of those edges match up and stitching this time at my one centimeter seam allowance, making tiny little adjustments the whole way around trying to make sure that those edges stay lined up and back stitching at the end so that's how that looks so I just need to finish that edge which I've went ahead and done off camera I've given it a bit of a press towards the bodice and now I'm ready for the back so I'm going to do exactly the same thing here with the back so my flounce pieces this time are right side up I'm laying my back bodice over the top and pinning and ready to stitch. Back stitching at the start, sewing within my one centimeter seam allowance here and back stitching at the end. So that's my flights attached to my bodice. Now to attach those underarm pieces in exactly the same way as I did the front. So anchoring that stitch at the bottom, pivoting straight away, making sure my edges match up and stitching, making tiny little adjustments the whole way along at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching to finish. So that's my flounce nicely sandwiched in between my back bodice and my underarm piece. And I've done the same thing here again, so I finished off those edges and pressed them towards the bodice. So now to finish off the neck and the underarms on this top, I've decided to add a facing. So I have one piece on the fold for my front and two pieces for my back. So I need to join those two back pieces together at the centre back seam. So just laying one on top of the other, right sides together and pinning stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. So off camera I've just finished off that edge on the overlocker and given it a bit of a press and then I've added some bias cut interfacing just at the neck on both front and back. I want this to give a little bit of structure to make the neckline nice and crisp but I don't want it to restrict the neckline either. So this is my first time trying this method and I really liked how it turned out. So I've just finished that bottom edge on both facing pieces front and back on the overlocker and then pinned this is my back piece to the neckline and underarm and now stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's my back facing attached. So off camera I've just finished off that edge on the overlocker and I want to treat this edge in exactly the same way as I did the flounces at the shoulder. So I want to under stitch so in preparation for that, I'm just pressing that finish seam towards the facing and here stitching just about a millimetre or two away from that seam, back stitching at the start, starting at the underarm, coming up to the neck and back stitching, starting again at the neck 
the whole way across the neck and back stitching. And then starting again at the other underarm. And I'm doing this in three stages because I won't be able to sew right up into that point where the underarm meets the neckline. So that's why that looks. And off camera I've just given that a nice press. And now to do exactly the same thing on the front. So just pinning my facing to my bodice. My fabric is right sides together and ready to stitch. Starting at the underarm point, up to the neck, little pivot at the neck, straight across, pivot again, and down to the underarm. And then off camera, I finish that edge, press that finished edge towards the facing, and here I'm just finishing off that understitching, just in exactly the same way as I did the back. So that's how that looks. So now that my facing's all attached, I can close up my side seams. So just pulling my facing up from the bodice, lining those side seams and facing right sides together and pinning, and ready to stitch. Stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance, Back stitching at the start, trying to make sure that my edges are lined up the whole way along, my joins there on the underarm and at the facing, and back stitching at the end. So that's one side seam done, and of course I've done the other side seam. I finished off those edges and given it a bit of a press, and while I was there I've just ran my whole hem through the overlocker just to finish that edge and press that hem up by my one centimeter seam allowance, just in exactly the same way as I did the flounces. And here I'm just finishing off sewing that hem down. So sewing from the inside, directly through those overlock stitches, back stitching at the end, and that's how that looks. And off camera, I've given that a little bit of a press, and then I just have one final thing I want to do, and that is to run a few stitches in the ditch just to hold that facing down at the side seams. So I'm just placing my needle right in that side seam, making sure my facing's all lined up nicely in underneath, and stitching directly through that seam. Back stitching at the start, and back stitching at the end. So that's my facing all nice and secure along the side seam. And with that, this little top is complete. I've got that nice facing to close up the neckline. I have my flounces all nicely sandwiched in between my underarm and my bodice on front and back. Got my hem all in place. And this is what it looks like on. So this is just a basic little jersey top, but I think with the flounces and with that square neck, it makes it a little bit more dressy. I really love how this turned out. The only complicated bit in the construction of this was adding those underarm pieces, but even that wasn't too taxing, so I will definitely, definitely be making more of these. It's so comfortable, and as I say, a good one for out for lunch with the girls, or perhaps even out for dinner. Love this! So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do, and I shall see you in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks.